right. Now, this will tell us. And that's pretty conclusive. Still going. Close. Oh, yeah. I think he got it down. How strong is he? Welcome back to the Pick and Go podcast, Hunters. Thanks for joining us once again. Boy, we've got plenty to break down after last weekend. And uh, as you can see, very exciting because we're all back in the year for the first time and probably in this year, I think. So thanks for joining me, fellas. How were your Easter weekends? Lovely, yeah. Plenty of good footy to enjoy and uh, it's a nice time with the fun now. So can't complain. I worked, so yeah, it was all right. Yeah. I worked and drank plenty of uh, Hawks Bay's finest. So good, good. Uh, Good weekend all around, bit of a fact-finding mission, the playing some good rugby up there, so I just went up and see what I can find and uh, pass it on to my friends in the Manawa too. So it's, it's good stuff. But um, I think there's one place we've got to start with the action last weekend, right? And it's uh, not at the Abbey Winery, it was at Orange Theory Stadium, where, boy, um, the Blues certainly showed up to play. I know me and you were pretty bullish on the Crusaders and thought they were going to run away with it, Paul. Uh, how shocked were you? We were very, 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 very wrong. Mm. Very wrong. Um. Boy, the Blues were good. Yeah. Um, boy, Bowden Barrett's good. Wow, hey. hot take. Um, <laughs> this for some. Well, but I guess he hasn't had a, I guess, a consistent start mm. to the season because he hasn't, he hasn't been there all the time. Um, but crikey, he showed up last weekend, um, and I'm going to have to say he's probably he's got a foot in front of uh, Moanga in terms of the black jersey at the, in my opinion. Uh, I like it coming straight in with the hot takes. You know, well, you know, the punters riled up. Well, it was a hot. It was a hot game. Well, they didn't have a bad game though. No, so, no, it's, know, it's he, not like. Um, it was great as well. Yes, I just think that Barrett was just just yeah. a wee bit better than him. He did wave Dalton Pubbly through to the try line like a very <laughs> very willing crossing guard at one stage. But no, he was. I'd do that if uh, yeah, Pubbly yeah. was running at me. Mm. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah. There's not um, the blue we can single out about 15 different blues they were all, all great it was yeah. Yeah, a really good team performance but was there anything in particular from the the showing that stood out to you Richard where where they won it or the blues yeah oh they just yeah they kind of just uh put the pressure on the first half mm. and then it made the most of the, the red card early days you know they got that um so Eklund came went over another another hooker scoring a try yeah. <laughs> but to see uh that, that game was very on brand with the season with the red card yeah. and the hooker, hooker scoring but uh yeah, I mean, I mean, Bowden Barrett just had his um, he had his fingers on everything, didn't he? Uh, he was all over the show. Um, plenty, of, plenty of good performances from the Blues. I thought Romano, you know, you saw the look on his face at the end. <laughs> I thought he had a great game, played eighty minutes, and um, he was, yeah, he saw what it meant to him. But I thought, yeah, he was great. Um, so two two, Rico Ioane, like that, that tackle mm. from oh, yeah. Rico Ioane was just wowie. Well like that's um yeah Lee got a lot of the credit for that and like he was great yeah. all night but th that was all Rico, <laughs> no like, was him. yeah yeah i saw was... um who was that? someone was saying it on um on i think it was on the breakdown that you know a couple of years ago they reckon that he rico wouldn't have mm. wouldn't have sort of try, even tried doing that you know yeah, so it just yeah. sort of shows how far he's sort of come in the last few years but yeah no nah, hats off to the blues you know last time i was on the pod i had them below the Two Aussie teams mm -hmm. in, the, in my power rankings, but uh, I yeah, think we can blame some technical issues for that, right? <laughs> We've got to put but, the pump uh, now. Mm. The yeah, yeah, like those are one, one on the power rankings that they have yeah. to be. Yeah, we were saying this last week with James like, how good is the build up? Presuming these two face off in a semi or final, like if it's going to be at Eden Park, we're going to get a massive crowd there. Like, that's the match everyone's going to be circling and want to see again. So, this has done wonders for the comp, I think. Like, it's hopefully a, a fired up that Blues fan base, which is you know, been, being in New Zealand's biggest city and everything. Well, I saw someone saying that Liam McDonald should be the next All Bats coach. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> hold on. Yeah. That shopping trolley's <laughs> right down the yeah, end of the aisle. I think the next All Blacks coach might be in the boys' coaches' box at the moment. But there you go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See where you're well, going with that one. When will we know about the next All Black coach? Yeah, after the World Cup. Oh, after the World yeah. Cup. Okay. Not, not after we're down 2 0 to Ireland. I'm not, not being negative. That was a great game. Very fired up. Um, well, I guess sort of. I guess in the Barrett household, sort of a sweet and sour taste of that match. Yeah. Do we need to talk about Scott's red card? Well, if not for him, maybe for the rest of the players, take yeah. note. You just can't do but that. But that wasn't even unlucky. That was no. late, high, and he yes. tucked the shoulder. Like, I think that it, was a red card 15 years ago. Yeah, oh, I think four weeks he's got to be thinking, yeah. I've won mm. the, the lotto here. 
Because they were, they said there was mitigating factors, but it doesn't, didn't really. Yeah. Trying to think of what they were. His head was sort of ducking down, but yeah. it was like the ball was gone. Yeah, like. I, yeah, I thought that one was particularly egregious from someone. Like, he's a leader in that team. And, Watching you know, it with my, um, my father-in-law to be, mm. and he was like, nah, nah, that's not really good. I was like, yeah, yeah that's definitely oh. a good <laughs> yeah. Oh, rubby, oh, rubby's yeah. going What part of New Zealand like... would your uh, father-in-law be from? From Wanganui. Oh, oh <laughs> not, not far from where the Barrett's are from, so. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Hmm. Yeah, no, I thought, like, compare it to the Josh Jett. No, I don't, I don't want to get in a huge red card chat here, but compare it to the two incidents, obviously, in those that went unpunished. But I thought that was by far the worst of the three of them. Yeah, like, yeah. it was ticked all three boxes, but we'll go uh, extra week. But yeah, I mean, mm. I wouldn't have been surprised if he'd got five or six weeks there. But mm. yeah. But for me, I thought, like, the most impressive thing about the Blues was not like they obviously took advantage of the. The, 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 the man up. And being up, being down to 13 men, anything like that. But we've seen time and time again that this red wave in the last 20 minutes. The Crusaders, they go, we need to score some points here. And they turn on, and then there's nothing even to stop them. Yeah, sure, Sevier Reese got two tries, and they were, it was backs against the wall. But I think a lot of other teams would have just folded there. And the Blues, they were, in terms of mentality wise and everything, they stood up at the set piece, which they haven't done against the Crusaders for decades. And that they, you know, they defended their line, and they they were like, "We're here to win. We can win this." They that wasn't a big brother, little brother mentality or anything like that. Like it's clearly there's been a mentality change in that dressing room, and this this game's only going to add to that. I thought that defense mm. was yeah. super impressive, yeah. uh, especially in that final sort of five minutes when they were in their own twenty for yeah. a good portion. Um, Imagine three really... years ago, the Blues. Oh, yeah. You know, they would have scored on the yeah. second phase. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I thought it was really telling as well. The Crusaders, I sort of watched the replay back this morning. And when they were five metres out, they weren't going to the first runner. It was all sort of stuff from the second pod. And they were trying tricky stuff. They didn't, they clearly didn't in their mind think they could just bulldoze this Blues yeah. team over, which I think, you know, the Crusaders do to most teams. They, they're they like, we need to try something here. We need to take a few risks, which which they did, obviously, with the, the ball out. Was it Gallagher or one of the locks on the yeah, wing? And then. Yeah. Um, was it Will Jordan throwing the offload that led to the knock on in the last second? Like, they didn't ball. just look like you've got Pablo Materi, you've got Ethan Blackadder, you've got yeah. David Avili. Like, you just line them up and say, We're going to run over you sooner rather than later. But they, they didn't do that. So, yeah, no, full credit to the Blues. That was, um, yeah, super impressive. I don't know. Is there any other performances or moments you want to shout out? I think, yeah, Bodie was close to best on ground, probably with Papa Lee for yeah, me. Papa Lee's probably best yeah. on ground. Yeah, mm. like, he was huge. That, oh, I was just gutted Bodie couldn't regather that. Um, the, not quite a chip and chase, oh, more yeah, like yeah, a slog yeah. and chase. I mean, scored there, that would have been one of the, yeah, that would have been on all the highs. Would he have slid really. over if he had held on to it? I think he was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was a great, yeah, yeah. Because it, it, at first it just looked like he's just kicking it away, but his chase turned it into an actual, that was an actually a, an attacking ploy. Mm. Um, without that chase, it was, it just a given position away. But he, and I think, who was chasing? Was it uh, Reese? Was he chasing along with Bar- Was it Will? Jo- yeah, was, was it Will Jordan? Yeah. It was just. It was almost like, you know, he's just like they were thinking. Oh, he's just kicked it away. And, yeah, yeah, and then, you know, and he, you forget that burst he's got. Like yeah, Will Jordan's like, quick, but when Bowie puts the afterburners on, it's and then all of a sudden he was there. Was like, oh, crikey, we've got to do something there. Yeah, a lot of fun. But I got to ask. Um, it's they're now two seventy five in the name of the finalist market. Crusaders Blues. This result suggests, presuming the Blues can do the job against the Aussie teams, a rematch will be at Eden Park if they do face off. Who are you going to be picking at this stage if you had to put your, now your Crusaders still slightly ahead in the outright market, 250 versus 275? I'm sticking with the Crusaders. Um, but yeah, the, I've given the Blues a lot more respect than I was, um, well, a few weeks ago and throughout this whole sort of podcast, this year <laughs> yeah. and this podcast. Um, yeah, I think I can say they're better than the Chiefs now. Yeah. Blues. Same You're taking the Blues? No, I'm staying with the right. Crusaders. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sticking with them. Okay. Yeah. But, oh, I, can't, I hope it happens. It'll oh, yeah. Amazing game. Mm. It's I think Mark as well. Yeah. You know, It'll like, be a two point line or something. Like, yeah. it's gonna, it, the odds will be dead even, pretty much, especially with home advantage. So the Blues yeah. would, but the Blues would have taken a lot from that one. You know, mm. they, they've got that hoodoo of, um, you know, winning mm. down in Christchurch for the being 18 years or whatever, or whatever it was. So um, they'll. I know they'll back themselves, obviously, mm-hmm. but no, I think I'd definitely still be not definitely, but I'd still be going with Crusaders. And I, yeah, as you say, I think it'll be it'll be tight, it'll be mm-hmm. two three point line. Yeah, no, very very much looking forward to that one. Hopefully, we do get it again. But we obviously, um, I do want to touch on 
Dalton Papali a bit more. Obviously, he was pretty epic on Friday night last week. We sort of went through with James the All Black midfield options that was looking like a bit of a muddled picture. So, it seems like loose forward trio is the sort of flavor of the week in terms of who we're picking this week. Has that performance moved Dalton ahead of Sammy Kane for either of you two? We're talking about the captain. Yes. Well, that makes it a tricky yeah. uh, sort of a proposition for the All Black selectors, then, doesn't it? If if Papali on form and yes. right now he okay. is okay. the best yeah. seven yeah. in the country. On form, yes. I don't, I don't think that the yeah I think that the All Black selectors will probably still go with Kane, and they might be able to maybe put Dalton in. I don't know what he, on the bench. He played blind side Can we play or through? Or? So that was yeah. The, like, yeah that's I, the only problem because him uh, like Artie Kane and Dalton are all bigger sevens. Like none of them. Are, there's no Marty Hollow Waterbug types. Yeah, yeah. they they all had a bit of size. They're not. Like against Ireland, you might need a bit, a bit more physicality, but I think you can probably, like Blackhead is the same, you can probably pick any three of those four and they can all really play all three yeah, positions yeah. in the loose forward trio. So I think it adds a, a you know a lot of dynamism and versatility there. It's just whether you can against an Ireland or a France who have these monstrous forward packs. And we saw what happened yeah, last, uh, last year. Yeah. But like I will point out, Dalton started that game in Dublin where the All Blacks forwards just gone, that wasn't like a, that wasn't Sam Kane. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm not, uh, yeah, I, I think it could go either way. I still think Sam Kane deserves a spot. I think he, he gets a very tough time for the amount of work he gets through. And it, it's oh, yeah, I mean, like, I mean, uh, as I said, I think that they all still pick him. I think on form, I, I'd say he's probably, um, Dalton's probably better seven, playing better, but mm. not like Kane's playing better. Mm. You know, he's been putting in some good performances, yeah. but I think um, we'll see. But so yeah. the least forward trio yeah. to the first test mm. of the season will be severe. Kane and Blackadder? I think that's what they'll go with. Is that what you would go with? I'm going to throw out a name here. But out Tupu Vai at six, if you want a bit of size against an island. Like, he's obviously more of a lock, but he's played six for the Chiefs. His mobility is not in question at all. He's great ball, ball hand. He's, his physicality is really good. His versatility, I yeah. think, makes him a bench player first. I'd, I, mm. I wouldn't mind seeing him in, in the sixth jersey, um, but I think that they'd probably have him on the bench so he could, if need be, he could cover lock or blind side. Yeah. Mm. I could. I mean, he obviously yeah. could do I, like, I don't think it's going to happen. It's just uh, something I'd maybe not against Ireland in the first test, but it's something I'd like to like, see tried maybe against the Wallabies or something like that, because I think he could be a really good option there against these big. Like, it's not chucking Scott Barrett at six where you're just playing three locks. Like, yeah. It's. He's a legitimate blindside flanker in his own right in a lot of ways. So it's just something that, but yeah, I, I think they'll go Blackadder, Kane, and Artie with, yeah, probably Dalton and maybe Satuja on the bench as more of an impact player. But I think so cool has got to be breathing down. Yeah, and, um, been great. Yeah, it's, it's Hoskins. Great You'd like to see him in the squad at least. Yeah, you know? I'd like to see them both in the Fiji squad, but that's not going to happen. Yeah, so. <laughs> uh, yeah are, you like got, are you guys the same trio? Do you think we'll see? I'm going to go with... Uh, Blackheader, Papali, and Sevilla. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. that's what I would do. But yeah, I think they'll put Kane in. They've obviously got reasons to put Kane. He's the captain and he's not a bad player. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it'll yeah. be Artie, it'll be Kane, and it'll be Blackheader. Yeah. Yeah, I do want to see the three sevens in the field at some stage and see how that goes there. Uh, this is uh, this is a much better. Not that the midfield issues are bad, but. This is just guys playing really well and forcing themselves into the conversation in the loose forward trail. Whereas the midfield, it's like, mm, it's a bit. Who's left in? Yeah, it's a bit, a bit of last man standing vibes where this is very much like, geez, we have a lot of good loose boards. Can any of you play 12? So, yeah. No. You mean like Geordie? Yeah, well, he can also play 15 very well. And back there this week, but we'll get to that later. Ireland, um, 520. To win the series? To win the first test. That's. Yeah, um, I mean, you, that's what you've been your whole all along. Yeah, you know, it's very lose the first test. I can see it. Like I think five twenty is overs. Yeah, yeah. That's great price. Mm. You take them with the points then. Oh yeah, and all black's a bit rusty. Like we don't know where the game is, do we? Have they announced yeah, the. I think they've seen. They've the announced three the venues, three venues, yeah, yeah. but yeah, like if that if that's not under the roof and it's you know a bit of squirrely weather in Wellington or Auckland that night. Oh yeah. Oh, Wellington, Auckland, other two. Yeah, yeah. Wellington, Auckland, Dunedin, and I believe are the three. Yeah. Um, but before we, because uh, we could do, I think, a whole podcast on the we Island could, series every week for the next eight weeks. Like, oh, yeah, I can't wait for the series. But we've got 
six weeks of trans tasman clashes in super rugby pacific to look forward to now after we're all, we're all done with the australia versus australia new zealand versus new zealand games obviously all the conversation this week is about how the australian teams are going to stack up are they getting enough respect um we got a lot of grief paul when we put our power rankings up saying we were being disrespectful to the reds and the brumbies who were way off the pace in Super Rugby Trans Tasman last year, so saying that they were better than the Hurricanes, who then went and lost to the Crusaders by one point the day after. Just, just saying. But um, have you guys seen anything from the Australian teams to suggest they've closed the gap from last year when it was, I mean, by all accounts, a fairly wide? The, the Tasman Sea was about as wide as it looked for a few years. A yes and no. Thank you. I think the Reds and the Brumbies I have seen improvement from both of those mm -hmm. teams. And I would have been very, very keen on the Reds this weekend, but they've got a key out, yeah. um, which uh, I'm sure we'll get to a bit later. Um, but I think the Brumbies, they represent a wee bit of a chance against the Highlanders. They're, they're by far and away the two best Australian teams. I think the Waratahs have... Exceeded at, expectations. At, well, at best, they've... They're sort of where they are, where, where they were last. They're much yeah. better than where they were, but they're still not close. Like, they haven't come close to beating the Reds or the Brumbies outside of that one game. And, and no, they're not so, keeping up with yeah, the rate yeah, of inflation. Yeah. No. Yeah, I don't. I actually think the Reds aren't as good as they were. Like, and they're, they're, you chuck in their O'Connor injury, he's going to miss the Hurricanes and Highlanders games, which were probably like their two. two games, whatever so, yeah, it's the Brumbies that are going to be the one. They, they almost beat the Crusaders in Christchurch last year. They beat the Hurricanes. I don't know if, like, I, yeah, I haven't seen anything to say they're much better or worse. But I, over the New Zealand teams, the Blues are obviously better. I think the Hurricanes are actually going better this time that, like, than they were last year. You just look at their results against the top New Zealand teams. Like, they were last in Super Rugby Pacific. They had in Super Rugby Aotearoa last year. So I do think they might be slightly improved. Uh, and, like, TJ wasn't there last year as well. So that's going to be... Um, I still haven't figured out who the best back line is. No, they, they will never figure that out. Um, Not this season, doesn't yeah, look but, I mean, see how many games yeah. we can... Uh, I do think it is fair to say the Highlanders are yeah. not as good as last year. Right. Yeah. So right. that that would be... Yeah. And I think we've got right Blues, High, uh, Highlanders, Brumbies this week is really the one that's going to be the yeah the measuring stick or whatever. If it wasn't mm. for the injury to, to the to O'Connor, mm. I wouldn't have minded sort of the Reds' chances in a couple of these games. Um, I still I think, think with yeah. last year with that final mm. being where you know like yeah. in the final and they sort of obviously mm. celebrated from there and we saw when they played the the Highlanders they played first yeah, I think, yeah. and I was quite keen on them in that game but they just yeah, yeah and they, then like they, they, their heads were elsewhere yeah. you know so the fact that there hasn't been this sort of it's kind of just continuing mm. on and mm. yeah but yeah injury to O'Connor is huge yeah yeah no that's uh, yeah, unfortunately for the Reds, because they do play a good, great style of footy, and it would, they played a really good competitive game against the Blues at Suncorp last year, which was a, it was a seven point game. The Blues sort of always had their noses in front, but it was good footy, and they are capable of playing those good games. So it yeah. would have been nice to see how it kind of fared against the New Zealand opposition. But yeah, um, I think yeah, it's going to be down to the Brumbies, and really, I think the big question is going to be how Moana Pacifica yeah. match up against these teams. I'm just devastated that there's another game called off they're gonna to have to do another storm week or whatever a back up it. Get, what, a three but, yeah. and eight days or something mm -hmm. like that because i really thought like they would have been relishing this game over it we've got the tough part of the season out of the way we've we've had some really good results there's some positivity around the camp yep. now we can springboard and if we can win four or five of these games they were shout at quarterfinals but now to just have the sort it's of, going to make it that much. Yeah, it? the wind taken out of their sails. It's yeah, really, and I was just like really looking forward to seeing some of those like Toala and Amua in the midfield yeah. against the Force and some of those teams. Um, Stowers and the, the loose Fords as well. I think yeah, they. Yeah, but, they um, um they, I think because they opened up favourites for that game and then they had I think they drifted out as the outsiders. Yeah. Um, until it's twenty towards thirty or something. But yeah, I was pretty keen on them yeah. as outsiders, but. We'll uh, hopefully have a game of theirs to preview next week. Yeah. That was the sort of the main game preview I had written down here, but instead we'll head along to Saturday evening where the Hurricanes are set to face off against the Reds. We've, uh, We've seen got a Hurricanes team. We do. Um, Why are we? Have you not, you not seen it yet, Paul? No, I haven't. We, we'll do a little, well, I'm going to read you the back line and, and get, get your live reaction. TJ. Number nine, TJ Perinara. Love. Nope. What? Uh... Geordie, I'm putting him in the 15. He is in the 15. Mm. Oh, there's, that's all right. I don't mind that. Umunga Jensen and Balen Sullivan in the midfield. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I do like that. Yeah. But, we, but, in fact, I think yeah. that's probably our best midfield with Geordie at the back. Mm -hmm. 
I do. I think it's got the the highest upside. If Peter can get really fine form, he's clearly the most talented out of that group. So, Houston. Yep, on the left wing. Severe. Right wing. So love's not in the team. No. So that means it's either oh, so it's not Garden Bishop. No, Aiden it's Morgan, Morgan who's getting another chance. Oh wow. He scored a try last week, inserted himself well off the bench, so it'll be interesting to see how he can lead the team around the park. Who is on the bench? Uh, Jamie Booth, Jackson Gardner, Bishop, Billy Proctor, your backs on the bench. Interesting. And then uh, TK Holden, great man or two man. Indeed. Uh, Justin Stinks, thanks to Tavito Mafaleo, Xavier Numea, and Lenny Apasai. A bit of a hockey crisis with Dane Coles not back yet, and Asafo having a little enforced vacation, so... Keanu Kiru signs. Get a new signs. Wow. But, uh, Big yeah. opportunity for him. Mm. Love it. Yeah, yeah. No, I think there's a lot of, you know, we, I think we said this last year in the Hurricanes, to be fair, actually, aside from that Brumbies game, we saw a lot of the younger players really step up. Obviously, I was thrilled to see Brad in the USA really have a breakout that's sort of towards the end of that uh, Super Rugby Trans Tasman season. And I think they've got to be hoping we see a bit more of that from some of these young, young forwards and everything like that. But in terms of this game, the O'Connor and Jay's really probably taken a bit of the year out of the Blown Riders as, as a as a contest. Yeah, yeah, he's mm. well. The, everything sort of revolves around him, as it does most teams with the number ten. But um, the Reds really do lose a bit of shape when he's not around. So, um, yeah, Dermot's back and fit. He, he is, yeah. The, the, Who's the young guy that they've brought in? Lawson Creighton. Lawson Creighton mm, making his Super Rugby debut in the ten jersey. Wow, what starting debut? Um, and Jordan Pattaya is another out for the Reds this week. So in terms of, that's a lot of firepower gone from that back line. Huge. Yeah. Okay. Like, I was quite keen on the Reds, but, um, you know, just with the start, but yeah, yeah. with O'Connor and Katire out. And, well, you like, had them better than the Blues last week. So. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> yeah, the Lions uh, stayed. I was surprised to see it hasn't moved more because I think I've had six and a half, seven and a half. The Hurricanes obviously had some early money come for them. They were very, very quickly backed and it's sort of stabilised to eight and a half and has stayed there despite the James O'Connor news. Where are you leaning in regards to the line, Paul? Oh, I'm leaning the Hurricanes mm-hmm. uh, side here. Uh, I, I just obviously we'll get a, a better idea after this weekend just where the Aussie teams do line up mm-hmm. against the New Zealand sides. But um, I, I think the Aussie teams probably they need to be at full strength first of all when taking on the New Zealand teams, and if they're not. Um, it, it just makes it that much harder. I, I, I can't see them. I can see a bit of a score happening here. Okay, yeah. So I'm happy to take the Hurricanes 13 and over and minus the points. Are you at all concerned about the Hurricanes performance last week? They actually started with a hiss and a roar and uh, then were up, oh, man up for uh, 20 minutes and then clocked off 55 minutes early. Yeah, it felt like that, eh? And yeah. They, well, they had a big week, you know. They'd had that, was it what, Saturday? They yeah, had the they did. They we're on the, the storm Tuesday, week. Um, and then, yeah, maybe they just... Thought they were pretty comfortable in that in that game, and then they sort of just let the Highlanders. I don't know, we were a lot better than the Highlanders in that game, and the Highlanders probably lucky to bring it in. To be fair, they should have been up there. about thirty yeah, after the first thirty yeah, minutes. I think yeah. like so. Um, oh, I don't know. Hurricanes is eight and a half point favourite. Yeah, me it's feel real queasy, you know. <laughs> Even with mm. O'Connor out, um, the Reds have been. I mean, they've been winning games, but they sort of they probably haven't been as convincing mm. last couple of weeks. Um, I just think they're going to really struggle to score points without yeah. Connor. And I can see maybe and later in the game. The same yeah. sort of like you know the Brumbies have got mm. that sort of like the rolling malls that sort mm. of game, but the Reds haven't really been. Yeah, they don't want to it. slow it down yeah. and turn it into a grind like the Brumbies do. They kind of want to keep pace with the Hurricanes, which when you've got one team missing, maybe the two best backs, and then you've got Peter Ominga Jensen, Balen Sullivan, Jordy Jordy Barrett. Artie Severe on the other side. It's yeah, I think yeah. a track meet's only gonna favor one team, right? Minus eight and a half. Uh-huh. All right. Paul Paul's certainly feeling pretty confident. I uh, I just want to see the Hurricanes put together an 80 minute performance really and get get the five points ideally. But yeah, I do I do think yeah, just without the without the, those two backs in particular, Connor, that was sort of the Reds as a real live underdog chance gone for me. But, yeah, we I guess we'll, yeah, it's hard this week. We'll know, we'll yeah, know a lot I, more I, next honestly, week, like, yeah. I was looking through his bets and, and the, you know, tipping the line. I, was, mm. I think after this week, I'm, we'll have a bit of an idea of sort of where where the teams are, the New Zealand and Australian teams. But yeah, oh, I don't know. 
<laughs> How about... I, I I'll, think, I'll be tossing yeah. the coin when it comes to uh, giving out the top seed. Right. Uh, the other game that I think you're expecting to be a bit more competitive, Paul, Sunday afternoon, probably the game of the round, just uh, looking at... Certainly odds-wise. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the Highlanders, dollar forty-five favourites against the Brumbies, who are 260. The Highlanders did beat the Brumbies by 21 in Canberra last year, but, you know, a lot of water's gone under those bridges since. Um, the Highlanders, they've looked better than, like, the last three games, obviously ran the Crusaders and Hurricanes close and beat Moana Pacifica. Are they, is this, are they poised to springboard back to the Highlanders of last year when they, like, when they played the Australian teams, Paul? Um, I certainly think they will pick up a number of wins against the Australian teams. I just think um, this is probably the last team they probably wanted to start against. Mm. Um, oh, yeah, they yeah. more than anyone would have loved a, a Rebels or a Drua this week. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Just, just because of how their, uh, their New Zealand part of the Super Rugby Pacifica has gone so far. Um, and although that Brumbies, their style of play where they um, like to hold on to position, grind down other teams. I think that sort of style is least suited against the Highlanders. I think the Highlanders can live off scraps of ball. Yeah. Well, they um, don't want the ball anyway. They're perfectly yeah. happy to well, mm. intercept or yeah. whatever. Um, the Highlanders can can sort of live with that style of rugby. Um, so it's probably not the best matchup for the Brummies. However, having said that, I do actually like their chances against the Highlanders. Mm. You know, when a team has been sort of losing week after week after week after week, it becomes a almost ingrained subconsciously. So um, I'm very, very keen on the Brumbies at 260. Yeah, I don't mind the Brumbies at all. I think, um, yeah, the fact that the Brumbies are what, like, lost one game this year? Yeah, they've only lost yeah, one. And the Highlanders only won one. You know, maybe if the Highlanders had got the win against the Hurricanes, it might have been a bit of a confidence booster. Um, but yeah, the way the Brumbies play, it'll, they'll keep it tight um, and they'll, they'll grind it away. Um, so I, I don't mind them as, as uh, I know that was obviously, um, you know, the Hines has got the big win over in Canberra last year. But yeah, mm. as you said, there's been, it's a very different Hines team and the Hines team probably playing with a much different sort of mentality and, and confidence as well. So Hines are getting better, but yeah, this, they would have, yeah, they would have rather played probably any other team in the comp this year, um, this week. And um, I'll, I'll definitely be signing with the Brumbies this one. Yeah, I think this one's going to be right. It's come down to who gives away penalties in the wrong areas and kickable penalties and rolling moles and everything like that. There's a couple of key factors I'm looking at. Um, the Highlanders forward pack is going to be pretty severely de- depowered now. They were already missing Selby Rickett and Frizzell. Now Josh Dixon's gone and yeah. uh, given himself a, a f- few weeks' holiday. So l- l- losing a lot from the engine room there, which is what the Brumbies' real strength there. Uh, they're going to thrive in that tight five and just, you know, dragging you into that physical game. And then they, they're a really solid defensive team out wide. Like, they don't maybe have the game breakers in their back line, but they, they defend well. And a Highlanders team is sort of struggling to create, well, coherent back line moves or sort of orchestrate points. They're really relying on those individuals, mainly uh, Umanga Jensen and Solomona, to yeah. create opportunity. I don't think you can win those one-on-one battles against a really well-drilled Brumbies back line. So... I do think it'll be close. Like, I don't think the, the Brumbies are going to run away with yeah. it, but just at, I'll, I'll take the points out because I think it might come down to sort of who gets the last penalty in a kickable position or something like that. Yeah, I imagine that. Garden Bishop's look good for them. He has, yeah, he's another one as well. But it's, yeah, a lot of. Uh, like, it's weird for a Tony Brown side, right? Like, he's usually so great at these set plays and everything like that. But I feel like all the, the good yeah, moments the yeah, I've seen it's... from yeah, the back line, it's been Shannon Frizzell, where a lot of the first few games, he was making a break and there's no one there with Busting him. Busting tackles. Yeah, yeah, Garden Bashup looking really dangerous, but just running out of space because... Was yeah. like, was like, I think it was in that Crusaders game, you know, where they kept it close. And so many times where people were making breaks, mm. but no one, you know, no one was there. Those yeah, other teams yeah, where yeah. probably the Blues, the Crusaders, Chiefs, that, you know, they'd have you know, a handful of people there to, and support. But yeah, they just kind of... And I, I think, don't know whether they got the personnel and they have the depth. Yeah, and, and, and as you say, like they're losing um, mm. Nixon as well, which is huge. I mean, I think, he, I think I read he's played every minute this season, you know? Yeah, so yeah, he's, he's been an 80 minute player and uh, might yeah. just be a bit much from us. So when yeah. I saw them as, yeah, 5.5 uh, favourites, I was pretty surprised. Yeah, no, they're down to what? Yeah, they're third and fourth choice locks. So it's going to be a tough old battle. Put your hand up. Me? Yeah. I'm still on the Brumbies Plus. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know who's going to win it. That's My point, we yeah. same day multi of like Brumbies Plus mm. and a couple of hookers, hookers to score from either side. Oh, just that's, yeah. the third or fourth cho- choice lock. Yep. 
Oh, right. You're moving yeah. up the ranks then. <laughs> yeah, well, I've got to get through 80 minutes at Eastbourne on Saturday first. Whoa. Whoa. Boy, that's going to be a real Big battle. game. Yeah. Here we go. So tune in on Friday for the 85 podcast. Uh, what do we got? Our, oh, I just uh, I think that pretty much sums up the other two. The, the, those two games pretty well, right? Like we're all pretty keen on the Hurricanes. We're not so sure about the Brumbies. Was there anything? The other three games they're all pretty wide lines. I believe the, the Crusaders and the Blues are hovering around that 30 point favorite mark against the the Rebels and the Drua respectively, and the Chiefs dollar eleven head to head in the, in the opening game of the round. Uh, What's the, what's the point start in that one currently? It's 16 and a half. Oh, I'll pray for the Rebels. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're going to feel the backlash. Yeah, yeah. It's, Will Jordan's got the week off, but not, not many other people. Yeah. Got no. Sam Whitelock back, Jack Goodhue back. Great to see. He's probably exactly. only a minor drop in uh, quality of opposition to what he was facing in Christchurch Club Rugby. So. Wow. That, that's <laughs> an insult to Christchurch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was mm. expecting the Crusaders to maybe uh, throw, you know, like maybe... Um, mm. You know, try a few things out. You know, get some I think if they'd won last week, yeah, the yeah. uh, Fergus Burke would be a lot more prominently featured this week. And if, especially with uh, Moana, because that game went but they, it, you exactly, know, they when they get when they and they kind of like where they they yep. actually mm. tried a few of the um, didn't so well. No, and so, I, I think they've learnt their lesson from that. And they, especially after what happened last week against the Blues, they want to. The margin in the last five games um, between the Crusaders and Rebels. The Rebels. Yeah. Uh, 26, 66, 45, 22, and 59. Uh, scoring an so, average of 60 points in those yeah. games. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't mind. Uh, the, the minus. The minus. The, the, yeah. It's a pretty clear forecast for Melbourne on Sunday after. Yeah, my, yeah, I just look at that yeah. as well. Yeah. My only concern would be if Amy Park started to rip up a bit after four games yeah, of footy. Yeah, the, so they, uh, seen it uh, Sunday afternoon. Yeah, the early, yeah, early kickoff on, uh, no, late kickoff on Sunday. So, yeah. 6.30. Yeah. Um, Our time. Okay. That's. I thought it was later, but I was wrong. So no, that's yeah, good good time. Uh, that, okay. That's one for your same game multis. Yeah. Le- Leicester flying a new race. How many, yeah, many try scores can I get in there? Yeah. Matera. Yeah. All yeah. right, yeah. Uh, just give us what what's the how many points the Crusaders going to score? Give us a number. Fifty. I'll go sixty. I think you're both being conservative. Seventy-two. <laughs> Seventy-two. <laughs> So they've scored 85 and 66 against them in, in okay. Razor's Vera. So. I'm sorry, yeah. we were talking the whole game, not the first half. <laughs> All right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't like... I finally kicked that handy. Yeah, we sort of... Me and Paul got bitten a few weeks ago. The Crusaders lost their game to the Chiefs, and then we thought the Chiefs had the upper hand on them, and last time they lost two games in a row, it was back in 2017 or something, so... Not they, anymore. Uh, they, yeah. No, they Oh, no, they'll of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, they they do bounce back usually from a poor show. Not that that was a poor showing, but yeah, um, oh, I think it was a great game. Yeah, they'll be yeah. eager to yeah get get back in the into winning ways. So yeah, yeah. I, I do. Um, the rules. I also I I fear for the drawer, particularly at the set piece against the Blues. I see they've given their starting props a rest this week. I don't know if that's tactical or injury enforced, but their line out was struggling at the best of times against the Aussie teams, and now they're going to face a Blues team that's absolutely flying and uh, yeah I, I think that one could get pretty ugly if the blue even if the blues give a few hours a week off they've still got such good they've probably got the best depth out of any new zealand team i think they drew a look at it and thinking okay let's mm. look at the game that we're a chance well they've got of the highlanders and suva next week obviously that's the one i think they're gonna so they're, yes. yeah i think all eyes are on that they're, oh, they're probably, yeah that. they've got probably about a few of the first choice players i already. would have sent some of them over yeah, already yeah I'm quite high on the Chiefs as well, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. the last two games between the Chiefs Warriors, uh, 33 mm. and 37 points uh, last year and the year before. Um, and yeah, I think they'll really want to be making amends for mm. those sort of losses. They've got a few outs, though, haven't they, so the Chiefs? The yeah, missing their first choice halves pairing. It's uh, Ratama and Gatland in the in uh, halves. No, we, but I'm really excited to see what Cortez Rotima does in this. Uh, Area of the comp because he's he's got massive reps on him so yeah hopefully see him fire on the wing I'm interested to see yeah I'm mean, really excited to see what they do with that Alex Nankerville has been playing great for yeah. as well this he's won for your same game multis on Friday night couple, yeah yeah no, I left him out there. because of all my same game multis on Saturday because I was like now Bradley Slater is going to score all the tries they won't he was, he was great again um yeah stupid by and Josh Lord against maybe a bit of a weaker opposition yeah. was excited to see what they do and just yeah really excited to see the battle of the loose forward trios because the Waratahs that's probably the strength obviously. Michael Hooper back and Will Harris and Charlie Gamble have both really impressed me in the Australian games this season. So 
big chance for Peter Gustav Kuller and Luke Jacobson to, I think that's that's the... Great to see Jacobson. Yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah he's kept him last week. You can see him starting. Um, it's one we didn't sort of talk about in the chat about... You know, yeah, because he, he was sort of, I remember having this conversation with Beaver this time last year, and he was the one we were all penciling into yeah, the sixth year. I was, was, was bigger than last year, eh? so yeah. good player. It's good to see him get back, and hopefully, he can uh, string a few good performances together. Can he play in the midfield? <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, as well, uh, someone who likes to spend a lot of time in the back line, Akira Iwani, we haven't seen this season, who yeah. was yeah, yeah, playing good footy at the end of last I mean, year. Was it the game against the Springboks, was it? When... Uh, the Wallabies in Perth, oh, yeah, yeah, an yeah, absolute yeah. stormer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah no, that's it. He's got mm. that. He's got that jersey kind of, mm. it's his, but yeah, a lot can happen. It's, it's amazing the amount of riches we've got yeah, in certain yeah, areas yeah. and then the sort of, not quite, I mean, it's not panic stations at the moment, but just the amount of injuries and um, players in and out of form in, in regards to the midfield. And the, and the front row, well, is, I think it's probably the biggest problem area. Look at, like just looking at the matchup, with these, you've got these athletic freaks that France and Ireland in particular have. There's no tug furlongs. Yeah. Around in New Zealand rugby at the moment, you'd have to say we've probably we have a few athletic props, but we mainly sort of lean towards the scrummages first, yeah, ball players second. So that's really that's well. Sad. I hope they can scrummage. Yes, uh, they're going to need to. Yeah, yeah. No, they'll. I'm sure they'll find someone. Ethan De Groot's certainly got plenty of upside. So yeah, good to see him there. Saying so, has gone soft over the week as well. I love that. You know, he, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, about the red, that, the red cards. He's like, oh, I think it's kind of a bit soft. Yeah, so always love to see the players uh, being I'll, honest. I'll send yeah. the article to uh, my mother-in-law. Um, Despite that. what New Zealand rugby are telling the players to be quiet after games and not criticise referees, maybe they should tell referees to penalise being tackled with the air at lineouts and shoulder charges. But uh, should we make some bets before I get myself in more trouble and leave New Zealand rugby on the phone? Yeah. What's your best bet for the week, Paul? I had a look, and I was tossing up between two. And I'm, I'm just going to take the Crusaders minus the points. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was 30 and a half the last time I looked. I don't know what it is now. It's... I've run down 28 and a half here. Yeah, yeah I, I believe it was 28 and a half. Is it? 28 and a half. 28 and a half. Yeah. Crusaders minus, what's that? Four converted tries. Oh, my goodness. Wow, we. Yeah, they might get that in the first twenty minutes. Like I can see them taking the foot off the gas, but I think they're going to have flying out. Yeah, yeah, times two. Right. I think Crusaders will mm. be way too good, and uh, yeah, I'll probably be getting them on a couple of uh, alternative mm. minus thirty-five. It cost me a bit of money 40. this season. So, have, yeah, yeah. I know, that's true. They haven't been a great. They haven't really covered much, have they? But. I think this will be different. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm going with the Blues minus thirty and a half. Both seem like pretty good bets, but I just think being a bit earlier in the week should uh, yeah. it should suit the Blues. And yeah, with the drill, I do think they've got one, two, three eyes on next week in Suva. So uh, yeah, I think the Blues win that one pretty comfortably and uh, carry on their hot form. Uh, blues minus thirty and a half, my best bet of the week. I will go first with my value because I'm going to the game where you guys just tipped out. The Crusaders minus, and we don't have any alternate lines available at the time of recording, unfortunately. But if you go into the winning team and margin 10 point market, mm, oh. scroll down to the bottom, Crusaders 51 plus six dollars should be half that price. Wow, I like that. Mm. Well, yeah, I just said I think yeah. I'll put that, I think they'll put at least 60 on. Mm. So they've won two of their last five against the Rebels by 66 or more. So, yeah. A lot of points. What, what's your value bet, Richard? Uh, yeah, I said before, quite keen on the Chiefs. Um, mm-hmm. In the last two games have been, I think it was 21 and 23 points one. So I've got Chiefs 21 to 30 at $3.80. Nice um, one. And you, Paul? Uh, Canes 13 and over mm-hmm. at, I think it's 225 That's what I've got written down here. Uh, are we all taking the Brumbies as our upset alert? I am. Best yes. underdog? So yep. They're yes. really the only viable candidate, I think. Right? Yeah. Now, watch Australian teams win three games or something. But yeah, I'm, I'm uh, taking Paul's value bet for my bonus back. Obviously, Super Rugby bonus back and same game claim running on all the games this weekend. Great weekend for five to 25 same game multis amongst some of the games. So get stuck into both of those, head to the Punders Lounge for all the terms and conditions. But um, my bonus back bet is Kane's 13 plus 225. I think they win that and I think they could run away. I've gone the same game, but I've gone uh, Kane's 1 to 12, uh, 480. Which I mm. thought was a great price. Um, I do think that 
I really to put up a bit of fire. Oh, I did write this before I knew Colin was out though, so no, I'll stick with that. Yeah. You've been, to be fair, um, absolutely smashing us in the bonus back picks as well with these. And for, if you're going to follow well, I haven't, us, I haven't the, won. I haven't won in a couple of weeks, I think. But you're, I, you're, you're up 2.8 units for the season. Yeah. If you're even stakes on all your bonus back picks, uh, me and Paul are both in the red. So. Yeah, I will say I'm, the only place I'm at. I am flying with my, my best bets up 1.6 units, six out of eight, I think I am, so five out of seven, something like one. that. So, yeah, uh, Rissy's the man to follow for bonus bet. But what's your bonus bet, bet Paul? Uh, well, I was going to make it the Kane season and over, mm. but seeing as I've already done them as my value bet, I'm going to go Brumbies one to twelve at three eighty. I like it. That's nice yeah. one. Um, and uh, well, just a multi anchor. I'm going. Hard to find the Blues and Crusaders 13 plus both didn't quite fit the dollar twenty threshold, but you can actually, if you take uh, go to the Blues game and I believe it's in the alternate or the home to him, away team, home sorry team, yeah, minus yeah. twelve and a half whatever the Blues are a dollar twenty minus twelve and a half. Yeah. So I didn't say that. Take actually. that while you can for your multis. Yeah. What's yeah. your multi anchor, Richard? Uh, Chiefs minus seven and a half in there on dollar thirty seven. Nice. Yeah, I think the Chiefs will uh, win them win that well. So that'll be uh, running through all my uh, multi busters for the weekend. And you, Paul? Kane, see the dollar twenty seven. Yep, I did consider that one, but it did make me feel a little bit sick just the price next to yeah. the hurricane. So, but very hard to argue with it, especially with the economy news. I'm, impri- I'm impressed though. It's a good price for a multi anchor. Yeah. So, well, thank you. Finally, yeah. got to follow yeah. the rules. Um, all right, all it's, we're all neck and neck, neck in the tipping comp as well as we uh, head into the business end of the season. Uh, Paul leading the way on 20, 20 correct tips. I'm on 19, Richard on 18. So all to play for. Uh, go ahead. Chiefs minus 16 and a half, the current line. Yes, please. Yep, Chiefs. Yep, no interest in the Waratahs, I don't think. Blues minus yes, 13 please. and a half. Yep, yep Blues. We're going to make a lot of people mad on Facebook in about an hour and a half, I think, because are you both joining me on Hurricanes yes. minus 8 and a half? Yes. Nah, nah, I'll go Reds. All right. I'll mix it up. I am taking Brumbies plus five and a half. Yes, please. Yep, Brumbies. Yeah. What number yes, would please. I have to say to make you take the Rebels? <laughs> 40 and a half, I reckon. Yeah, I, I even did. I'd feel pretty sick about it. <laughs> so we're all we're all on the Crusaders. We're all on the Brumbies. Yeah. Yep. All on the Blues yes, and yes. all on the Chiefs. Yep. So I'm just right. relying on that. The yeah. Reds to cover to sneak my way back into the comp and uh, crawl my way back. Yeah. But there, I think there is plenty of value to be found out there this weekend if you're uh, keen to get stuck into it. And yeah, it should be a lot of fun. We've got five. It's great to have five different games involving New Zealand teams, if nothing else, yeah. ch- ch- change it up a bit. So yeah, enjoy all the footy this weekend, punters. Um, we're back again in seven days' time, presuming I survive 80 minutes of rugby on the weekends. So otherwise, you might have a new host in the hot Appreciate seat. Patrick. We will have uh, we'll have another Pick and Go podcast next week to preview the next week's games. So I hope you find some winners this weekend, and we'll talk to you again later. Cheers. Cheers.